Hello everyone, I am going to make a presentation on safety instrumented system sys loop. This topic will be on components of safety loop. The video is being taken on behalf of instrumentationtools.com and automationcommunity.com. Kindly watch and subscribe to the channel. What are safety loop components? Safety instrumented system has basically three main components to perform safety functions. Sensor. This is to measure the process parameters such as pressure, temperature, flow, differential pressure, etc. Preferably having SIL safety integrity level certification. It is preferred to have such certification for these sensors. Logic solver. This is an intelligent controller, usually a programmable logic controller which is having very high processing speed and scan time. As we all know, the SIS logic solvers has to act very fast depending on any hazard happening inside the plant. So, the processing speed and the scan rate for those processors shall be very high. So, the logic solver has to be selected accordingly. Final control element. This is an automated on-off valve having SIL certification with the solenoid valve, limit switch, Instrument air regulator and pneumatic booster lace. These are the subcomponents. Several and valves, limit switch, instrument air regulator, and pneumatic booster lace are the subcomponents of an automated on off valve. So, when the valve is built with all such accessories or subcomponents, it has to get certified by the relevant certifying agencies like ICSIDA, TUV, etc., and other international agencies for the qualification of safety integrity level according to the requirement of the process. Alternate safety loop components. Safety instrumented system has further components electrical and analytical instrumentation. Earlier what we saw is all are process related sensors and final elements. There are other components as well. So, sensors, they are current transducers, power transducer, Analytical instruments such as oxygen, CO2 measurement and gas chromatograph. This will be used in the refineries, petrochemicals and other chemical industries. Logic solvers. Sometimes field mount PLC having more ruggedness and high temperature rating with high speed scan time can be used as safety PLC. Normally the safety PLC, BPCS controllers, everything will be located in an air conditioned area either in the, in the process zone and connected through a fiber optic cabling. Within the process zone, it will be in a shelter which is having a gas traction system and other thing to detect any gases appearing inside the shelter. Normally, this is a case or in some cases, DCS and uh, safety instrumented system controllers may be located in the control room which is far away from the process area and they are in a safe zone. But there are field mount PLCs available these days which can withstand high temperature and they can be deployed in the field directly. But only a small cooling system using an instrument air through a vortex cooler, this is a, like a small cooler arrangement can be made to keep the temperature within certain limit. Otherwise, they are prone to work with higher temperature than the conventional PLCs which are to be housed in the air conditioned zone and safety zone. Final control elements. For an electrical interface, there is an interposing relay to give trip command to motor starter. Motor starter is nothing but it is a electrical uh, device. It is a controlling the switch gear for the pumps, turbine, fan, etc. In this case, electrical relays also need to undergo the proof test requirements. Uh, in the earlier slide, we saw it is an uh, on off valve having multiple components. But there are interposing relays uh, which is mostly sitting in the switch gear control room in a separate electronic cabinet that will be taking the input from the sys logic solver and giving a command to trip the switch gear which is for the pumps turbines fans etc so now we are seeing it process loop these are the typical safety loop components then there is one reactor which is having a pressure transmitter temperature transmitter in this slide we are seeing both bpcs and sys because to make an explanation understanding it is given separately there are two temperature elements 
it is connected to the input output modules of the BPCS controller and the output from here it is going to the control valve. So, other than that there are two pressure transmitters and one te temperature transmitter which is connected to the input output modules of the safety instrument system. The complete in this unit which is having a power supply CPU stands for central processing unit. IO unit which is input output unit or input output module. Here for example this is an input module because all the sensors are being connected over here and this is an output module which is giving a connection signal wiring to the final element on a valves. And these two are known as the cis final elements which is the on off automated on off valve and these three are the cis sensors. So, this is a safety instrumented system PLC having a power supply, CPU, input output modules, etc. And uh, we are seeing a different uh, picture showing typically a valve, a sensor, everything. So, here we are seeing in this process there is a gas flow or uh, liquid flow is going through this process line, and there are two valves by one manufacturer known as Emerson. The valves or uh, the actuators or Betis actuators, they are having the components like in the previous uh, slide. This is air filter regulator, this is solenoid valve, this is a booster relay and uh, there are actuators which is doing the action for the on of valve. And the valves are by one manufacturer known as Virgo valves. Similarly, there are two valves are there because cis final elements normally there will be two valves for the safety depending on the seal category, safety integrity level category. And we have one more uh, component known as DVC controllers as well which is the digital valve controllers. So, this is the final element, cis final element and there are three sensors for measuring the pressure of the process. These transmitters sends the pressure and then gives the signal to the logic solver over here. And this is again another manufacturer known as Rosemont pressure transmitters. Since there are three transmitters, they are acting in a two out of three voting logic and then we are connected to the controller which is a delta V cis logic solver. All these components are by one manufacturer known as Emerson. The cis controller PLC is having a communication link to the BPCS HMI monitors and all wherein the operations can see the actions being taken by the CIS controllers. Okay. Earlier we saw there are electrical interfaces as well in the safety loop. Here we are seeing electrical relays which is giving a input to the PLC. Actually here we have barriers, isolators, Converters, relays, these are different electrical components. Normally, it is through barriers we are getting the signals for the current and power measurement. And this is our uh, PLC which is having the hardware for uh, processing the signals and then giving an output command to the field devices, which is a relay. This is, here we are seeing the example of an electrical interface. So, here we are seeing an electrical relay and through the relay from here it will be going to a switch gear which is operating the motor fan or pump etc so this is a typical electrical interface we are having barriers and isolators to get a signals like current power transistor signals and then giving an output command through an electrical relay to the switch gear we are again and again talking about the sensors final elements and logic solvers. There are logic solvers also, there are having different designs. One is a redundant configuration which is having two PLCs or two central processing units running always in parallel. They are doing the processing function and they are always in parallel. In a healthy environment, in a normal environment, both processors will be acting. These two processors and in case of failure of any running processor, there will be a, an automatic switch over to the secondary processor and this is known as redundant configuration. 
and here we are seeing one panel having multiple terminal blocks and electrical components and a main power supply mcbs which is the circuit breakers and there are some relays mounted over here and some barriers mounted over here and this is all giving to the signal and input output terminals are also located over here and here inside which is shown in yellow color and shown by that arrow is a plc it's a redundant plc configuration and the another uh, one is a triple modular redundant here we are seeing if see this these are all known as modules so first one is a power supply module the second third fourth are the processor modules here we are seeing one two three identical modules they are known as the uh, central processing unit with the three redundant because their three are operating parallelly there is a start timer between the three so whenever any one fails the other two will be functioning supposing the second plc also fails for unknown reasons the thing it can not work with the single plc also but under normal running conditions of the plant all the three processors are running parallelly so this is known as triple modular redundant this is uh, given by some vendors and there are input modules output modules and communication modules etc for the functioning of the processor and giving command to the other systems like a bbc system and sometimes other third party systems so these are the sys logic solvers and we went through the different components sensors logic solvers and final elements these are the components involved in a safety loop Thank you very much.